Yo, Elliot, I've made groundbreaking progress ever since joining the King Transformation Group in March of last year. I really appreciate you getting this together for us. What I'm currently dealing with now is women. I've been practicing abstinence and no fat for the past seven months and my energy levels are buzzing. My issue is that I want to find a woman who I can settle down with, but part of me is holding back. Given the business that I'm in, I can attract a lot of women, but the challenge is to find which ones are not just trying to up their status through what I'm building. I'm definitely experiencing FOMO and feel like I'm making a sacrifice. Part of me feels like I should continue doing what I'm doing by building myself up, but another part of me feels like having that polar bond can take things to the next level. So my question is, what is the right time to settle down and find a wife and how can I avoid just settling? So you say something here that uh, that I have to pay attention to, right? So you say, my issue is that I want to find a woman who I could settle down with, but a part of me is holding back. Given the business that I'm in, I can attract a lot of women, but the challenge is to find ones that are not just trying to up their own status through what I'm building. Every woman is looking to up their status through what you're building. I want you to understand that, and that's not a bad thing. You say, I'm, not, I'm trying not just to find one who wants to up their status through what I'm building, meaning you don't want someone who's going to use you. You don't want a woman who's going to come and ride your coattails, offer you nothing but the twat between her legs, and then part ways and take half of your stuff. That's what you want to avoid. You want to avoid a woman who's going to take advantage of you, right? But every woman is, as are men, but just in our own different, we do it different ways, self-serving. And a woman is always looking for a man that can up her status. That's why high value, high status, popular, famous, well-known leaders, the men at the top of the pyramid are the ones that women, even at the bottom of the pyramid, are hankering for. They all want the man that's going to pull them up to their level. No woman wants a man that's at her level. She does not want a man that's at her level, and she does not want a man that's below her level. It, it, that means status, that means money, that means popularity, that means career, that means uh, height, right? That means the w looks, right? They want better, and you can't blame them, right? Because men want better too, right? But, th but as far as hypergamy is concerned, when it comes to what a woman wants in a man and what a man wants in a woman is a little different. Women in this way can bypass looks in a man. They don't necessarily need a handsome man. When a girl is a teenager, she wants a hot guy. And to her, that basically means like a boy that looks like a girl because the boy bands have taught them that boys that look like girls are attractive. But they grow out of that shit once they reach their 20s and they want like a real man, right? But it's not even about looks. The cool thing is that you're a good looking guy and you can attract a lot of women. You can probably have sex with a lot of women, but you're, you're not doing that. You're saving your seed. You're protecting your, your value, right? You're, you're, whole, you're keeping that gate up and you're, you're making yourself stronger through uh, semen retention, right? And you're doing great. You're doing an awesome job. I'm proud of you. Recognize though that whichever woman you bring into your life, it's because she wants better for herself in her life. And I don't know about you guys, the way it is, what attracted me to my wife, one of the things that attracted me to my wife so much is that, and I know this is gonna sound crazy, right? Cause they say like, you know, don't be Captain save a -ho. But I wanted to make her life better, right? And it's not about being Captain save a -ho or, or or a white knight. It's about the sense of dignity and responsibility and dare I say power that a man has, that I have, knowing that I'm making this woman's life better, right? We, she and I were even talking about her sister and her parents and like, you know, her life was not great. She saw my life and it was like, wow, you have a nice family. You have, a, you know, you, you have a, uh, something that I, I would aspire to, right? And so I always had this, this sense of pride that I'm making my woman's life better. I don't think I would be as attracted to my wife if she didn't need me because her life was better than mine. If, if, if her life, if she was born into higher wealth, higher status, was around, you know, highfalutin, important people, and here I am, I'm kind of like, you know, this is the, the lowly guy, um, not only would she probably not be attracted to me for the right reasons, 
but I probably wouldn't be attracted to her because I want a woman that I can bring up, right? I don't. Maybe I'm strange. I mean, I, I know I'm strange, but I want a woman that I can bring up with me, right? Even if it means we're building together, but I'm building and she's coming along with me, right? I know in our egalitarian world, it's all about partnership, but partnership doesn't actually exist. There's the leader, there's the head, and there's the heart, right? The head leads the heart. In proper situations, the head leads the body. But the head can't exist in all of its, its glory without the body. So we need each other. Woman is the body, right? Like the body of Christ. Head is the head. Christ is the head of the church. The, the church is the body of Christ. It's the same way in marriage. Christianity is, is, is reflective of marriage, right? And so you are the leader. I want a woman that I can lead. I want a woman that... I can pull up. I can bring along with me, right? I want to save a hoe. <laughs> right? I don't have I don't know how else to say it. I don't want a woman that's a higher status woman that makes more money than me. That is, you know, all, now don't get me wrong. My wife is smarter than me academically. She got better grades than me, right? But at the same time, that doesn't equate to leadership in life. I want to be the leader. I want to be the leader, right? I'm a man. I should be the leader. It's our. It's not just our birthright, but it's our responsibility to lead women, right? Of course, today they don't want to be led because they think that they're women because the world has, you know, feminism. But that's neither here nor there. For relationships to work, there have to be, there has to be a head and there has to be a body. I want a woman that's a body, right? That through the leadership of the head can help me get what I need to get done in this world by being what a useful wife, a useful woman, like we were talking about before. Don't marry a useless woman. Right. And I think we need to be deliberate about what it is that we want in a woman when we marry. I knew that I wanted children. I would have hated to get into a relationship with a woman and then find out later, oh, she doesn't want to have children. What? Right. I want a, we decided very early in our relationship that she was going to stay home and be a caretaker of the children. She was going to cook. She was going to clean. She was going to be a homemaker. That's what I wanted. It's good to have standards, no matter how people denigrate you, particularly feminists. They want to denigrate men who have standards for women, that have desires for women. But women will turn around and say, I want a man who's six foot six and makes six figures, right? Right? And it's okay. You go, girl. You deserve that, girl. You deserve that kind of man, girl. And they all applaud each other. But the minute a man says, I want a virgin who's going to stay home with my children uh, and, and homeschool and, and, and cook, what are you, some kind of a misogynist? How dare you want a woman who's pure and traditional and helpful around the house? It doesn't make any sense, right? So anyway, right now you're asking me if you should start to engage with these women rather than continue to build up your status. I think, right, and I'm not in your shoes, I'm just giving you my opinion. I think that you're in a position, you're in a place and you're the kind of guy that women are going to flock towards. And you even say it right now. But you got your gate up because most of them are useless. You know what you want. And I think it's important for you to be firm about what you want. What do you want in a woman? What do you want in a family? And what do you want in a life? Make no, don't bend on that at all. Don't yield on that at all. You can yield on dumb stuff, right? There's dumb stuff that people won't yield on. Oh, but I want a girl that looks good in high heels. What, is, what, what did LL Cool J say? I want a girl with extensions in her hair. At least two errands, door knocker errands, at least two pairs. A, a Fendi bag and a bad attitude. That's what I want to get me in a good mood. She could talk with a, she could talk with what? A slang and walk with, she walks with a switch and talks with street slang. I want a girl who's not afraid to do her thing. <laughs> LL Cool J I don't know if you guys remember that Around the way girl That's what he wanted He wanted a fucking girl With a bad attitude Fendi bag And don't knock her earrings At least two pairs y you, could, you could give that shit up <laughs> That's not it I want a girl Who cooks and cleans I want a girl Who's pure And can make babies I want a girl Who wants to be a wife And a mother Right I want a woman who's not distracted by social media and putting up pictures of herself all, you know, all day long. I want a wife who doesn't take selfies for Instagram. I want a girl who is not shaking her butt on, on TikTok, right? If I start dating a woman, and I'm saying this to you because you're in that shoes, not me. 
the, all kinds of chopping blocks. You check her out, and she got a TikTok full of booty shaking. Uh, uh, wrong. Be diligent. She got an Instagram. It's all selfies. I don't understand these guys. I met these guys. I met guys. Maybe some of you are them. With a wife, they got an Instagram full of their selfies. That's like buying a car and the dealership saying, hey, but I just want to still advertise this car. I know you bought this car, buddy, but I just want to keep advertising. Is that okay that I keep advertising the car that you bought? When a woman is putting all those pictures of herself up on Instagram, she's advertising. She don't think she's advertising. She thinks she's doing it for her friends or she thinks she's doing it for her. I'm doing this for me. No, you're not. But you're just unconscious of the fact that you're advertising you're a pussy and you're married. So I'm ranting a little bit, but what I want you to understand is that you have to have high standards with these women. That being said, you keep doing what you're doing, keep building your value, and your standards could be as high as the sky. Especially if women in your realm recognize that you ain't messing with them. They're, they're going to go hard, head over heels, trying to get you to pay attention to them. And you just keep ignoring their asses until you find someone that you can sit down and start courting. And you know what the beginning conversation is when you court? You say, I'm looking for a wife that cooks, that cleans, that wants to have lots of babies and wants to be submissive. Use that word. If you say to a woman, what do you think about a submissive wife? And she starts throwing up a, a, a hissy fit. That's not the kind of woman you want to be around. You want a submissive. What man doesn't want a submissive wife? And submission doesn't necessarily mean that you're lowly. My wife is not a lowly woman. My wife has a big mouth. She speaks up. She does what she needs to do. My wife is a leader. But in the home, she submits to my authority. She submits to my leadership. To someone who's a leader, for you to be the best leader, meaning that you do the right thing for the people that you lead, that you, like I say, I want to give my wife everything. But a part of the reason why I want to give my wife everything is because she follows my lead. She submits to me. I'm more motivated to do great things as a man because I know that my wife will follow my lead. She's not going to denigrate me. She's not going to distract me. She's not going to try to destroy me. She wants what's good for me because what's good for me is good for her. That's the kind of woman that you want, fellas. That's the kind of woman that she'd be looking for, man. Not the LL Cool J around the way girl. These women are nothing but headaches. They're problems. And they're going to wash up real quick. So I'll leave you with this. These chicks hit the wall. Don't forget, man. Men and women do not forget. Women, you have all the value in the world up until about your mid-20s. A woman past 27 is used up. That's it. That's the only way I can say it. A woman, if she's still single past 27, it's because she never really had anything good to offer anyway. No man really wanted to be with her, right? I'm not saying all. I'm sure there are some. But they've already hit the wall. They, life used them up. Even if they haven't been fornicating that whole time, life used them up, right? And they already got, they're already setting their ways. They already have their bad habits. I don't want any woman who's setting her ways. I want a woman that I can mold, Right? Think about that, right? Do you want a woman who's set in her ways and you have to compete with her and her, her lifestyle and what she wants and how she's been living for the past 27 years? Or do you want a 22-year-old girl who's moldable? And as you continue to build your value and your status as a man and you move into your late 20s and 30s, your value goes up. You're more attractive. I was, more, I was less attractive as a young 20-year-old, 21-year-old Elliot as I, than I was as a 33-year-old Elliot. I didn't know this. Nobody told me. Nobody told me, hey, Elliot, you reach your sexual park market value peak and your status as a man in your 30s. I didn't know that. I don't know how old you are, but in my opinion, keep doing what you're doing. Hold them at bay. Maintain your frame and build your power. You say your energy levels are buzzing because you're not busting your nut. And then when you're on top of the world, when you're in your, I have a friend that did this, right? He's the same one that divorced. He divorced a woman that stopped respecting him. But then he went and recreated himself. And by the time he was like 35, 36, he went and got himself a 23-year-old girl. I can't argue with that. She hadn't been around the block yet, and she's moldable. So to me, my man, what I think you should do is keep doing what you're doing. And when the time is right, that young, tender, moldable, submissive traditional, 
housewife woman that you could really actually build with is going to show up. You don't have to go look. I don't think you're going to have to go look. I think she's going to present herself to you, right? Once again, there's a lot of sharks out there, a lot of snakes out there, and they be throwing their pussy at you. Any woman who's throwing their pussy at you is a red flag that it's not the one. Right? These women might be for fun, but they're not for building. Keep doing what you're doing and then find yourself a young thing, a young girl, young. I'm happy I got married young. You're 29. Good. Yeah, you're 29. You're right there. You're right there, bro. Between now, I say between now and the next three to five years, you going to be peaking. And I don't know where you work or what you do, but them young girls are the ones that you start to pay attention to and start vetting because they could be crazy, too. I'm not saying just because they're young, they're not crazy. But you want to find a, a young one, right? <laughs> that's my opinion on that anyway, man. You don't want any washed up bird that is set in her ways. And a lot of these women, that's what they are, especially once they start reaching their 30s. You know, in studio in Atlanta, y'all. You know? Good. All right, man. I think you're going to be all right. Listen, don't. I, a part of what you said here, I also have to bring up. You know, you said parts of me feels like I should continue doing what I'm doing and building myself. I like that. Then you say, but another part of me feels like having a polar bond can take things to the next level. Having, I, I don't, I don't want to judge your intentions. The polar bond thing, I think. I, I don't think you need it just yet. I think it's more of a hankering for sex. It's more, it's more, you know, you're wanting companionship and like you're kind of feeling lonely. You're kind of having like FOMO. And I get that. I totally get that, man. And, and, and I don't want to denigrate you in your place because I've never been in that place, man. I, I married young. I married young. I'm happy I married young. I married at 23. She was 22. I was 23. I'm happy I did it that way, right? That's not going to happen for most people. But um, if I was in your shoes... I'll just keep building what I'm building and then just be available. Just keep your options open. Keep your eyes open. You're 29, a girl, no more than five years your junior, you know, and start start looking for that one that's going to follow your lead, right? Because these women today do, do not want to follow. Women today do not want to follow. They will follow eventually, right? They have no choice, right? It's not because men are going to force them to. It's because nature always wins, <laughs> Um, Bolshevism is is unnatural. Marxism and feminism are unnatural. We're living in a very unnatural way with these uh, concoctions. <laughs> but, you know, women are going to start waking up when nature smacks them, right? And usually for them, it's too late. They get into the, they're 29. The women your age, nature already smacked them and said, hey, look, you're getting old. Your eggs are rotten. What are you going to do? Your party years are over. Rolo Tomasi calls it the epiphany years. And they wake up and all of a sudden they want to be good traditional women. Maybe you give one of them a chance, but maybe you don't. And I think also, I, I, just because you know I'm seeing this, there's a traditionalist thread moving through generation uh, the Z generation, Generation Z, right? Gen Z. Because what happens to Gen Z? They see all the garbage that the, everything from the boomers up until now have created, right? My wife and I were having this conversation the other day. In fact, it was yesterday. And she was talking about her mother and how her mother ruined her life. And I said, but look, it, her mother was, was born in the, six, in, in the late 50s and she was a flower child in the 60s. Her siblings, her mother's siblings, her aunts and uncles were children from the 50s. They all have traditional marriages, good families, good children, well-adjusted, right? But her mother was a part of the Cultural Revolution. The 1960s is when the Cultural Revolution came to America and feminism, Marxism, and everything that has you know, unfolded to the day where we're living under this uh, dictocrat, dictocratic, dictocratic uh, medical martial law, all started in the 1960s. So we have enough history, right? You got 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, 2000s. We got about 70 years of evidence that that shit don't work. These people are miserable. All washed up hippies from the 60s are miserable. People from the 80s, you know, Gen X, miserable. There is where all the divorces are happening. My generation and the one right before. So y'all, you know, by the time you get to the uh, millennials, they checked out. 
The millennials are like, fuck this. I ain't marrying. I ain't doing anything that y'all did because you showed us how screwed up it is. But here, what happened with the millennials is y'all threw the baby out with the bathwater. You saw the screwed up perversion of marriage and family from your parents and your parents' parents through the 1960s, 70s, 80s, and 90s. Gen Z, in my opinion, my hope is that they start to have hope again that relationships, marriage, family can work, but we sure as hell can't do it the, the way it's been done the past 70 years. We must look to tradition. And I see a lot of Gen Zers that are traditionalist. Right? Maybe it's the sphere that I'm in, right, where I just meet these people, but there's a lot of Gen Zers that are into tradition. Because why? Because they're looking back at their parents and their parents' parents are like, y'all fucked this all up. There must be something good back then. And so this is the cycle of nature. This is how it happens, right? Good times create strong, what? Good times create weak men, right? Weak men create hard times. Hard times create, what do hard times create? Strong men again, right? This, 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 this cycle. We're going through the cycle. One way, and I'm ranting right now, and I'm talking, this video is longer than it needs to be, but just talking about how things change, things evolve, and things go back to tradition, always go back to tradition, right? We always get perverted and go back to tradition. Just look at the fall of, of any empire, the rise and fall of all nations. In America, we've done it like, like that. We've already fallen, right? America's done. But tradition is going to rise again. So there's this story, somebody told it to me, or maybe I saw a YouTube video or something, and a guy goes like this, he says, it was a man, it was an Arab, wealthy Arab man, he said, my grandfather rode a horse, he says, you know, it was, it was, it was archaic back then, right, they were poor, they were poor, and it was an old time, it was like a traditional times. my grandfather rode a horse, he says, my father drove a Pontiac, Right? Wow, he drove a freaking car, a Pontiac, right? And Pontiac was like one of those, one of those cars that were like a big deal back in the day. Right? Father drove a Pontiac. I drive a Range Rover. Whoa, he drives a nice British expensive car. He says, my son will ride a horse. <laughs> right? Horse, Pontiac, Range Rover, horse again, right? So I think even you guys, right, you're 29 years old, I think you guys that are listening to this, you guys who are Gen Zers, I think you're going to see a return to tradition in your lifetime. I think you're going to see a return to tradition in your lifetime. And I'll tell you this, and I don't want to blow my own horn, but I want to be one of the guys. I know I'm one of the guys that are ushering this movement back to tradition because tradition works. Tradition works. Progress always leads to the road of hell. That's where we are right now, dudes. So that's it. I'm done with that. Hope that helps, dude. Done. Yo, it's your bro, Elliot. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, you ought to know that it was a clip from one of my most recent King Transformation classes with my students, where, among other things, we get together about four or five hours a week and we speak on things as it relates to becoming kings in our lives and fitness, business, and with women. If that sounds like you and you want to join a like-minded group of men who are growing stronger every day in every way in this degenerate age, then it's real simple. Just follow me on Instagram, and then DM me the word King, K-I-N-G, and then me and my team will get back to the details to see if you qualify. I really hope to see you at the next meeting. Done.